Good afternoon, JNG, and welcome to our Joy Nostalgia Culture Day. And for this exciting afternoon, we shall begin with our mind session. Okay? So, the mind session seeks to stimulate our minds through one-hour sessions that focus on specific topics revolving around our Christ Jew values. It seeks to foster an interactive learning environment through subject matter experts who can share their knowledge and expertise to the rest of our employees. Through these sessions, employees can learn valuable lessons and insights that can allow further growth and enhancement in each professional and personal character. Okay, so before we proceed with the talk of our special guest for today, let us first look back at the month's Mind Session highlights. So for a recap and to know more about what the Mind Session is all about, may I please call on our organization development group head, Ms. Joy Francisco. Thank you, Bats, and good afternoon, uh, Joy Nostalge. No? So uh, just a recap of the Mind Session last month. No? Our guest speaker was uh, Dr. Antoinette Palma Angeles. And she really discussed the relevance of unity in our company, as well as how it can be de developed in one's life. According to Dr. Tonet, unity means relational togetherness or working together as one in harmony. It is beyond making decisions based on personal preference because there is the concept of community that must always be acknowledged. A company that is united is profitable, efficient, and harmonious. It is an environment where kindness, happiness, and compassion foster, ensuring the organization's survival. Building a united community requires having like-minded people who share the same core values to create a bond. There must be rituals to create habits, constant communication, and structures that make people work together in adversity. In a united community, members bond and help each other willingly. For Dr. Tonet, empathy is needed to foster unity because unity means thinking of the common good. Makiramdam, makiramay, ed makisama are Filipino words that encourage unity within a community, bringing success and in the long run kindness among its members. So today, JNG wishes to focus on dynamism. Ano po ba yung dynamism? No? According to, of course, our GEO, see, uh, our uh, dynamism is our choice to be creatively successful to achieve greatness, empowered with enterprising force and entrepreneurial spirit respectfully. With our dynamism, we become the facets of creative, creative solutions that can change the lives of many. And it is very timely during these times when almost everything is uncertain and we have no complete grasp of what tomorrow brings. Here in Joy Nostalgia, we empower ourselves to adopt and make the most of what is in front of us. Kaya naman, this October, we will focus all our talks from today's Mind Session to our Mastery Mondays, Wellness Wednesday, and Forward Friday sessions on the value of dynamism and how we can push ourselves to embody the score value better. Now, before we, I introduce you to our speaker for today, no, I'd like to encourage everyone, again, if you have questions, to please put your questions in the chat box, and we will have a, a Q&A later on. Now, for, for, for our speaker for today, no, I am very privileged to introduce to you one of the pillars and mavericks no, in the advertising and peer industry with a stellar career that has brought her numerous achievements and accolades. She served as the group chairperson of Campaigns in Gray from 1987 to 2014. And she also served as the chairman of the Association of Accredited Advertising Agency Philippines uh, in two occasions, 1989 to 1990 and 2006 to 2007. She's also the founding president of the Creative Guild of the Philippines which conferred on her the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2002. She was the first Filipino to judge in the prestigious Clio Awards in New York in 1994. In 2006, the International Association of Business Communication, Communicators recognized her as CEO Excel Awardee. She was finalist for Socially Responsible Entrepreneur in the first Entrepreneur of the Year Awards in 2004. 
an Agora Awardee for Outstanding Achievement in Marketing Management in 1999, and a Towns Awardee for Communications Social Marketing in 1995. With her ex extensive experience in advertising and public relations, she strategized and executed various marketing communications campaigns for multinational and local brands like Procter & Gamble, Waya, Gliat SmithKline, Smith Smart Communications, among others. She conceptualized and wrote advocacy and social marketing campaigns for USAID, Resident Senior Advisor for Change, Philippines Family Planning Program, among others. And she also advised and implemented crisis communications on various issues for private sector corporations, including Samsung, Del Monte, and PNG. She graduated with a Bachelor of Arts major in journalism from the University of the Philippines. The UP MassCom Alumni Association, of which she was president from 1995 to 1997, honored her with a Professional Achievement Award in 1990. And the UP Alumni Association, in turn, gave her the Outstanding Professional Award in Mass Communications in 2002. She has also earned her degree in Master's in Public administ Administration major in Leadership from the Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you our esteemed speaker for today, Ms. Yolanda Ong. Good afternoon, Ms. Yoli. Good afternoon, Joy. Thank you very much for that very long introduction. <laughs> you will know how long you've been around by the length of introduction that you give. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Okay, Jello has been guiding me on how to do this because this is my first Zoom webinar where I'm actually uh, doing the sharing. So let's see if I did this correctly. There you go. Okay. As Joy said, the topic for today is lockdown dynamism. And that is why I know this sounds like an oxymoron. How can you be dynamic during a lockdown? Let's see. Uh, by starting, we say, dynamism is the philosophy that explains something of great energy or force. In fact, it's a reason why high energy persons can do twice as much work in a day. And then there is the concept of business dynamism. And here it's almost like they're saying that some businesses have a life cycle. They are born, sometimes they fail, sometimes they expand they, and they contract. And other jobs are created, others are destroyed, others are turned over. But in fact, they're saying, researchers are saying, that this is the dynamic process that is needed for productivity and to sustain uh, growth, economic growth. Okay, so, oops, what happened? I, I want to begin by saying, uh, this is a, a, a Bible quote that is so appropriate during these times. And the reason for this is because I just did a, a number of uh, focus group discussions uh, lately, and there is so much anxiety around our country. There's so much fear, so much sadness, that I feel that we should remember to be strong and bold. Have no fear, because the Lord, our God, goes before us. So, having said that, let us proceed with your own definition of dynamism. According to Jack, <laughs> dynamism is our choice to be creatively successful, to achieve greatness, empowered with enterprising force and entrepreneurial spirit with respect, respectfully. I like that very, very much. You know, it's amazing because some of the biggest billionaires and most successful businessmen was supposedly Jack Ma said that 2020 is only a year for survival. Then we find out later that this was fake news, that in fact, he never said that. And the explanation is that the quote is sourced from an edited video 
with a sound that is not the voice of Jack Ma. The original video was uploaded on the Chinese video uh, platform Iki on September 9, 2019, before the appearance of the novel coronavirus in December 2019. Now take note of this fake news because it will be relevant as we go down the talk. What he is famous for saying, however, is that if you want to grow, you have to find a good opportunity. And today, if you want to be a great company, think about what social problem you can solve, which is why I do believe that you are right on target. Because as you say, you take pride in being a proponent of alleviating homelessness and addressing the housing backlog in the Philippines. There is no greater social problem than what you are trying to solve. So congratulations, and on that alone, you are quite on target. But the question remains, is it possible to be dynamic in a crisis? Let me quote from Ecclesiastes. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. So in this Bible verse, they're saying that you have to take chances, that things cannot be all favorable with the weather all calm before you even set out. And I, for one, am a believer that it is possible to be dynamic in a crisis. Why is that? Let me tell you my personal experience. This is in fact like deja vu in many ways because when we set up Campaigns and Gray, that was in September 1 of 1986. It's actually six months after the people power. And I don't know, you are millennials, maybe you weren't even born then. <laughs> but really, what happened was the businesses were all closed capital flight was very, very high. Nobody wanted to open businesses. And in fact, all my colleagues who were still in the country told me, you are crazy to open a communications agency six months after people power. And I said, well, thank God, there's never a good time to open an advertising agency anyway. And you really have to be a little bit insane to try and go into this business, particularly at that time. Why? Not only were clients uh, deleting the budget for advertising at that time as being non-essential in a period of crisis, but in fact, they were saying that uh, you don't know what's going to, the ha to happen to the economy. You don't know how uh, the Aquino administration at that time, Cory Aquino, will, will uh, flourish and in fact, they were right because there were seven coup attempts during the entire term of Cory Aquino. In other words, Campaigns and Gray started, uh, survived, thrived during the days of crisis. And in fact, in five years, we were in the top 10 agencies. So I'm not one to be afraid of challenges. In fact, I think challenges draw out the best in us. But this pandemic is a matter of life and death. So it's not exactly a political upheaval. It's not an economic downturn. downturn. It is a life and death. It is fatal. And that is why I think it is also up to say that even Pope Francis said, it is the hope of a better time in which we can be better, finally freed from evil and from this pandemic. It is a hope. Hope does not disappoint. It is not an illusion. It is hope. So I, along with all of you, I'm sure, am hoping for better times after this pandemic. But le let's go back to the question. Is it possible? We've all heard that crisis in, in Chinese has two, and maybe Jack can uh, confirm this. Crisis is supposed to have two hmm? uh, <laughs> It's supposed to have, I think we have a party line. Anyway, it's supposed 
to be composed of two characters. And one means danger. The first character means danger. The second character means opportunity. In other words, in crisis, there is opportunity. Jack Ma said, today is cruel, tomorrow is crueler, and the day after tomorrow is beautiful. So in other words, crises are temporal in nature and they will fail, they will go, and we will survive. So according to the International Society for Human Rights, organizations do best during the pandemic if they abide by certain values. And I'm happy to see that I think Joy Nostalgia probably has these values already. But solidarity is the first one. And I understand you just talked about unity last month. So I can imagine that you have that down path. Dynamism is the second uh, character of an organization that is able to withstand a crisis. Alertness, well-being, and hope. Now let's go over that one by one. What exactly is solidarity? Actually, even as we distance two meters or six feet apart, the pandemic has highlighted that we are all connected and we share the same humanity. Despite all the turmoil of Black Lives Matter and all the other social injustices that we see, despite the great divide between the haves and the have-nots, we are actually connected and we share the same humanity whatever status we have and whatever education we've had. The second point of solidarity is really solidarity with your colleagues. Now is the time when faced with a common enemy, now is the time where you can be united as a force with your colleagues, volunteering to help and alleviate workload of others or helping those in need in your own communities. The second, uh, which is really the theme of our talk today is dynamism. And this is highlighted because dynamism means you are able to adapt and you are able to plan even with uncertainty. And you can use this as an opportunity to innovate, to test, and to expand new ways of working. So it, it's not all gloomy. The third is alertness. We have to have the vigilance to ensure that any laws or regulations in response to the pandemic are for legitimate purpose or protecting public health. Now, I could get diverted at this point and talk about Bayanihan 1 and Bayanihan 2 and question all the questionable parts, but let's not go there. I'm in enough trouble as it is. Okay. The fourth is well-being, and this is particularly interesting you know when we were when i had my my own company well-being was so important for me because the burnout rate in advertising is very high so we used to have uh, our conference table used to be convertible into a ping pong table at that time then we subsidized gym uh, subscriptions because i always thought that if you were healthy you were more creative and it all paid off here, well-being includes your physical well-being, of course, your emotional well-being, your digital well-being, and of course, your financial health and security, both of your staff, your leaders, and hopefully your customers as well. And the last big organizational value is hope. We always are inspired by the doctors, the frontliners, the healthcare professionals who are bravely, tirelessly providing care and support. I have a friend, his name was Doc Bro. He was the brother of one of my creative directors before. He used to be uh, uh, the doctor in a very big cruise liner. Then he retired, but he was not even senior yet, but he retired because probably he felt that he should go back to his country and help out. So he volunteered, no pay, in San Juan de Jones Hospital. In one month, he contracted COVID and passed away. But 
at the same time, he felt that, well, I guess his family feels that that was him. It was his nature to be always helpful. And therefore, we draw inspiration and we take hope from that, that his sacrifice, his life, will actually mean something for our health. And we also take solidarity, uh, we take hope from solidarity and humor. Have you seen so many jokes regarding the pandemic? In fact, they were saying, one joke I remember was, we were always so concerned with our load from SMART or our load from GLOBE, and now we're just concerned about viral load. And there was another joke where it showed uh, a young schoolboy, and he said, it used to be that the phones were not allowed in school. They take it away from me. And now the school is inside my phone. That's just one of the things, one of the pandemic ironies that we are seeing together. According to uh, experts, there are 10 skills we individually need to, uh, to learn so that, as John says, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. So we are going to make ourselves better with additional skills that we need to beat the COVID. And what are these? This is a long list, so bear with me and tell me if you think it's relevant to you. So the first one is adaptability. Hold on. It's adaptability and flexibility. And we are saying that the way companies operate and work now is going to change. Oops, hold on. Sorry, yeah. The world is already changing. It was changing even before the pandemic, but now it has been. Uh, sorry, it, I am hanging. Okay, there will be few jobs for life in the post-coronavirus world. And therefore, we need to adapt even more in the evolving workplaces. You know, in Japan, there used to be jobs for life where the job was actually passed on from one generation to another. But that, that was fading even before the pandemic. And now there is no such thing because you don't even know if the company will still be there. But anyway, we need to continuously update and refresh our skills. The second is tech savviness. And oh boy, we really need to do this, Joy, <laughs> despite um, certain senior limitations, I think we all need to acquire technology skills. It is fast-tracking digital transformations and we have to become more resilient. Even companies have to be more resilient to future outbreaks because they are saying that this COVID-19 pandemic is just one among many that may still come. So, Technologies like artificial intelligence, big data, internet of things, virtual and augmented reality, and robotics will make our, your businesses more resilient to future pandemics. Hopefully there will be no more pandemic, but again, it pays to be prepared. And whether you have work in a factory or in an accounting office, or even in an advertising agency, there is need to work with these tech tools effectively. The third is creativity and innovation. And of course, that's always packaged with dynamism. Businesses uh, that have been able to come up with different ways to deliver services are doing well and doing better. Can you imagine that Mercedes F1 that was doing racing cars started to provide innovative breathing aids just when the pandemic struck. That's, that was how agile and fleet-footed they were. And after the coronavirus, human ingenuity to invent, dream up new products and ways of working will have to be focused on. Data literacy, I don't know if you are already there, but you keep hearing words like big data. 
And big data supposedly helps predict the impact of the future uh, business disruptions and to serve customers with right products and services. However, it is not as simple as that because you have to understand and analyze the trends and the shifting uh, customs needed to respond in the right way if another pandemic or even this pandemic just stretches out. So there's need for data literacy, the skill to understand, analyze the big data and make better decisions. In towns, and towns has been around for a very long time, towns is the outstanding women in the nation service. We had an awardee in the last year. Uh, her name is Stephanie Uy, and she's into big data. She analyzes big data, and she was, uh, she volunteered to the DOH to help read the data on the pandemic. Unfortunately, uh, she, I, I don't know if she's still there, but she was lamenting that they did not want to understand the data in the first place because politically it wasn't very good to see the rising trends and it, would, uh, it was politically not a good thing, just like in the U.S., to give too much attention to the pandemic. So I'm not even sure if she's there. But the point is, we do have people now who can do big data analysis. And this is something that even I would like to learn. Of course, critical thinking. You already saw the fake news about uh, Jack Ma's supposed quotation. It, uh, sometimes there are misrepresentations of data of studies, of research, as leaders, businesses, and governments sometimes want to shift blame or divert the attention to avoid scrutiny. So fake news is alive and well in our society today. And critical thinking is needed very, very badly for us to be able to objectively evaluate information from different sources and determine what is trustworthy, what is credible, what is true, and what is real. Not all information obviously can be trusted and we rely on critical thinking to understand uh, and make informed decision-making processes. Then we need digital encoding skills. So, uh, Professionals with digital skills like coding, web development, digital marketing will become even more valued. And people who can keep digital businesses running and thriving, especially during crisis, makes the person uh, a must hire, a must hire person. All companies are now digitally based. So opportunities for digital skills are countless. Of course, leadership. And here, we all look to your leader, uh, Jack, but what this really means is everybody is supposed to be a self-leader, self-led. Social distancing and home working will continue into the future. The earliest prediction of a viable vaccine and for it to be able to proliferate is last quarter of 2021. And that is an optimistic evaluation. It's an optimistic assessment of when this pandemic will finally uh, round the corner, so to speak. You will be working in fluid teams and each of you might lead at different times. So it is necessary to be able to have strong skills so that you can bring the best out of your teams, inspire them, encourage collaboration, and that kind of person will really be in demand. And then finally, we have to commit to a lifetime of learning. Now, I want to tell you that during the COVID, just to entertain myself, I enrolled in Cervantes Idiomas. 
I had 18 units of Spanish when I was in UP, but beyond uh, Buenos Dias, I've forgotten everything. So I, re I re-enrolled and it was so much fun. So now I'm struggling with conjugating Spanish verbs. Anyway, according to the World Economic Forum, in five years, 35% of the skills that were seen as essential today will change. And I will show you their list in a bit. If the job market is tight, job skills will still be in demand and those with the job, the correct job skills will find employment in case you need to ever find employment. But you seem to be in a very good place. And here is where the MOOCS <laughs> comes out. Thank you, Erwin, for that. You have to improve your skills and this is not very difficult to do. That's the good news. There are a lot of open online courses that are available uh, to help you improve your skills. And again, MOOCs are massive uh, open online courses. Okay, so take note of that and we can all enroll. And I'll see you there sometime. Here are the uh, World Economic Forum 2022 Skills Outlook. I'll leave that on for a while so that you can read it and just think if you have those skills. <clears throat> so, I cannot help it. I have to talk marketing. That is in my DNA. And here I liberally quote from Mike Keppel, who's the founder and CEO of Patriot Software. He said, now is not the time to put the brakes on your marketing efforts. It's your opportunity to, to become more strategic than ever. Put yourself in your customer's shoes and better market to them. So that's from, and this is what he is advising companies to do at the moment. First, reassure your customer. I'm sure you're doing most of this already, but look at it as a re refresher course. Your customers are your fans. Send out email updates because a lot of them are probably not have, uh, well, they probably have Facebook because in the latest data, 98% of those who are on the internet are on Facebook. So Facebook has become uh, a very viable medium. You post regularly on social media and you add information in customer accounts. I don't know if you have one-on-one -on -one customer accounts, but if you do, it would be good to add more information in those. Then he's saying you have to get creative. And in fact, we all know that in times of crisis, we really become more inventive. And therefore, you could promote unique offerings like do-it-yourself kits and care packages. And some companies even offer virtual options to customers like online classes, meetings, and showcases. Then you have to kick things up on social media because even before the pandemic, it was already a very dominant medium, social media, very potent. You have to start and join conversations, utilize sponsored posts or paid uh, advertisements. I don't know if you boost or if you even need it, but if you do, you could uh, use boosting as one of your tools during the pandemic. You post more frequently. You could even have an online contest. Now, I don't mean the online contest that uh, Mani Pacquiao has. I understand <laughs> he has uh, online contests where he gives lots of money, uh, but uh, an online contest here could just be a phone, for example, or a computer as a prize. And uh, it's really for promoting your companies and your products. And then of course you keep customers uh, updated and you promote limited time offerings. 
I don't know if it is possible to build relationships virtually. I should really ask uh, these young millennials whether you have ever had a relationship that was purely virtual, because I understand it can happen. But with customers, you have to put yourself in their shoes. You have to feel what they feel. You have to understand their fears, their concerns, and their anxieties. And then you have to ask yourself, what would a customer feeling all of that want to see and hear from the business? And you, you should be able to answer that. And you should keep an open, honest, and considerate communications going. Plus, of course, you try to be empathetic. And please, please be authentic. Be genuine. And, you know, don't just go through it because halatang halata when you're just being insincere. <laughs> so be empathetic. Be thoughtful. Of course, you need to improve your online presence. By the way, I did take a look at your online and you could do a lot more, I think. You optimize your business website for mobile, for example. Um, <clears throat> apparently, uh, the, the processes for mobile are different from computers and from iPads and from tablets. So you might want to look closely into the mobile mobile uh, websites because they're a little bit simpler, I think, and less heavy. You need to create valuable content. You need to do some search engine optimization research so that your company uh, and your products appear way ahead of everyone else. Incorporate keywords on your website pages and engage in online communities and forums. There are so many communities and forums right now. In fact, uh, the latest that I have uh, discovered and uh, find very useful are the fan bases. I don't know if you know this, but at the very first rally that uh, Trump did in the US, and I forget which state he, he did that, they, they sent out invitations and it was completely snapped up immediately as in they were expecting a million uh, people to go to the rally. And then they were so disappointed because very few were there. And apparently what happened there were K-pop fans actually got the tickets and got registered really to boycott the event. So you, you can imagine that your online communities and your different forums that we are not necessarily interested in, but where a lot of people are there, can provide new markets and new opportunities. And of course, we should improve user experience, especially on the websites. So we are now asking the question of what would post COVID-19 be like? And people are saying, we have an opportunity not just to go back to where we were. We have an opportunity to have a new and improved normal, not just back to normal. And Pope Francis said, the world will not overcome the current crisis. It's only big businesses, financial institutions, those who are powerful if they're the only ones that have the voice. Everyone must be listened to. Everyone, those on top and those at the bottom. So I imagine when uh, in the prayer for the Holy Spirit, it says, renew the face of the earth. And I, I am hoping that probably that is exactly the purpose so that we have an opportunity for a new and improved world. The pioneer in social marketing, Carol Cohn, has always said, we cannot run a healthy business in an unhealthy society for long. And she did not mean just physical health. She meant the social injustices. Harvard Business School has a very, very simple definition of poverty. 
Poverty is badly distributed wealth. So, what is that? It means that too few people have most of the resources. And that is why post-COVID, we hope that we can transform the world, transform business from a culture of having, even transform individuals actually, from a culture of having to a culture of sharing. Andy said, the world has enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. And we should remember that. And I am hoping that we will finally have the economy of enough. What is that? It is the principle of the decent profit. And the decent profit is a scheme where the net profit is consciously, conscientiously divided into three parts. They're not equal parts. They're just divided into three parts. And what are those? First, you pay yourself and your investors. Then you spread the wealth to your employees and their families. And then you share with the community. That is the concept of the triple bottom line and the decent profit. And so I want to thank you for listening. I did not see you while I was talking, but I'm hoping that you got something out of this and that I'm praying that all of us will say at the end of this that I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race and I have kept the faith. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Yoli Ong, for that very inspiring talk about our Christ should value of the month, which is dynamism. And honestly, I was really intrigued on the part where the 10 skills needed to fight COVID-19 was narrowed down since much of uh, those that were discussed were actually relatable, especially now that we are at this certain point where we have to accept the fact that we, that we must keep on living, quote-unquote, normally, while knowing that we're actually coexisting with the risk. So it's very, very helpful, ma'am. So yan, kagaya lang po nang napag-usapan or na-discuss later, uh, earlier, my name is Joy. Um, we will now look at some of the questions that were submitted by our employees during the talk. So with that, may I invite our organization development officer, Mr. Jello Pohol, to facilitate. Thanks, Bats. Thank you very much. And thank you, Ms. Yoli, for your very insightful, meaningful talk. No, uh, truly, we learned so much from you in just a short amount of time. Now, you mentioned in your talk that, uh, sorry, before I continue, like what Bat said, guys, if you have questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box. Thank you very much. So, Ms. Yoli, you mentioned that dynamism has to do with being creative and innovative to reach our goals while maintaining the well-being of our employees. And I think we're very lucky that we have technology on our side, right? It's so easy to stay connected with Zoom, with WhatsApp, with the email, no? And like what you said about the joke, the schoolboy said, like when I was in high school, Bawa lang cell phones to school. Even if you have to carve up your math textbook to fit your phone there, the ODS or the prefect will definitely find it, right? So, so right now, sorry, sorry, I think I exposed myself with that. But right now, the school is in your phone. The school's in your laptop, diba? Right? The world has been changing prior to COVID-19. And COVID-19 simply hastened the process, no? So, this new normal presents us with a chance to learn new ways of doing things. That, that meetings can be held online. Transactions can be done online. And decisions can be made from remote. So we'd like to know, given your experience, no, what are the core attitudes that are needed for us to be able to, be, to see ourselves as lifetime learners? to always find what's new, to always adapt the changes. How, what do we need to know or what attitudes must we have to be lifetime learners? Well, first of all, it has to be curiosity. You must have an innate curiosity to find out about new things. Right. Uh, and, and follow through that curiosity. Because sometimes 
we are curious, but then we we don't do anything about it. It's just it just remains a question in our head, or it's uh, something in our to do list which we never get around to doing. So with curiosity comes the follow through, and as in everything in life, even in tennis, if without the follow through, you can't hit a home run. So curiosity, that ability to to update yourself, to learn, and then to follow through. It's what is required, the determination, the, you, you can't be lazy. You know what I mean? You can't right. be lazy and learn new things. If you are lazy, that is the, the worst thing you can be because you will not learn new things. So you just have to keep on challenging yourself. Something you don't know about. That's why I'm so curious about the artificial intelligence because I really don't know anything about it. So I want to enroll in one of these MOOC the classes but like like i said curiosity that's the first thing to have and then determination to follow through correct that's correct no kumbaga if there's something you don't understand there's something you don't get then why not do something about it to learn it diba to focus on the goal and not just dwell on the challenges how can i reach my goal while embracing uh, new ways of doing things going around and going over the problem no so thank you for that, uh, Ms. Yoli. Now, you also mentioned something that triggered me. You mentioned that we must always reassure our customers. Now, there are two reasons why it triggered me. The first is I bought something lately. It broke. And when I wanted to give it back, sabi nag nagbenta, Oh, sorry, nabili mo na. Diba? Hands off na. But I'm proud to belong to a company when during the quarantine, during the height of the pandemic, no, we not only looked after our customers, the people who bought our homes, we even sent uh, packages, we sent goods for them to make sure they were okay despite the lockdown, despite the loss of jobs. No? So it shows our company is willing to invest to look after people no, who have already purchased our product. Now, there are still many people who don't understand why that's important. Could you maybe share with us why is it important for companies and businesses to look after our clients even after purchase has been made? The best uh, poster boy and poster girl for any product is somebody who has already experienced the product and who is proud to be a loyal consumer of the product. That you cannot buy that. No advertisement is greater than the word of mouth and the testimony of a satisfied customer. That is why you actually, even if they have paid off, they bought your, your stuff already, you should consider them still as customers. And in fact, they have changed. They have changed from just being to be a new market expanded new market you know why because word of mouth they can tell their relatives their friends their cousins their neighborhood and automatically they build a new market for you so it is not correct to say that if they have already fulfilled or all their obligations you right. are done with them they are actually your best advertising right and, and and you know i think that's one that's one uh of the reasons why I think our company will survive this pandemic, no? Right. Not only conduct business, we not only uh, uh, work for the sake of working, we work because we're here to serve. We're here to serve the Filipino family. And I think if you're on God's side, diba, there's no way you can fail. There's no way you can, uh, you can be defeated by COVID-19. So uh, thank you for that, no? Now, speaking of uh, persevering despite crisis and challenges, you all said that uh, people called you crazy when you wanted to put up an advertising firm after people power, six months after. Diba? Yeah. The economy was in shambles. Magulo pa yung Pilipinas no, Nothing was sure. In other words, there was uncertainty. Diba? So, ma'am, uh, how are you able to develop uh, the, adaptiv the adaptability and flexibility during those very turbulent times? Well, I guess the spirit has to be willing and the attitude that, uh, you know, ask yourself all the time this question. What is the worst case scenario? Okay. And the worst case scenario, can you survive it? 
if you can survive it, then why hold back? That has always been, but of course, it's in my DNA, Jello. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but I describe myself as, a, as an advocate activist. I've, uh, that, I'm really that kind of a, of a person. But I think everybody has it in them. Uh, to ask yourself, uh, why will I be afraid? Why will, be, why will I be afraid to do this? So what if I fail? In fact, failure is the best teacher. That's what I told myself. If I fail, I'll just close up. And I, I had a few job offers at the time. I can always try and reactivate. I will become an employee again. Okay lang naman yun eh. So I always ask myself, what's the worst case scenario? And if I can live with it, I'll go ahead and take the risk. Wow. Okay. So in other words, uh, it takes a whole lot of courage and guts, right? To pull it off. And that can be cultivated, I think. Yes, yes. I, I love that, ma'am. You know, the, the willingness to, sorry, not the willingness, maybe the uh, being open to failure. No, of course, not wanting failure, but not fearing yeah. it. Not fearing it. No, be willing to take the plunge. If we won't jump, wala mga yari. Diba? Yeah. Good, no? And therefore, that gives us more emphasis, no? on the leaders of our company because the leaders in our company, John Nostalgia, are the ones steering the ship, diba? Right? They steer the ship towards the right direction. So we'd like to know from your experience, ma'am, what are the essential leadership skills to exhibit in a, what you call a VUCA world, you know, a world where there is volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity? Okay. You know, uh, I talked a little bit about what's not required. Uh, in fact, there have been numerous studies uh, on, on emotional intelligence. And, and in fact, the, the conclusion was emotional intelligence is even more important. EQ is more important than IQ particularly when the sailing is rough. Now, what, what does that mean? Uh, there are clinical studies. Did you know, for example, that, that Daniel Coleman, I think, was the one who wrote the book on uh, emotional intelligence, correct? Mm -hmm. it was not, he was a professor in Harvard, but at the time I was there, he was not even accepted. His book was not accepted because Harvard will not accept your text uh, your book as uh, reading if there are no clinical studies. So they actually did a lot of clinical studies on EQ and they found out that not everybody with high IQ ever reached the corner room, ever became a leader. But those with EQ are the ones that, that go on and lead. Why is that? A person with is able to empathize a lot more with the with the customers, with the customers and with the staff. He's able to motivate you better. And in times of crisis, that's what we all need. Hmm. Do you know that there are several there are several styles of management, and depending on the environment we are in, you use a certain style of environment uh, of leadership. And only a person with EQ will be able to know when to shift. So, for example, in times of crisis where everybody is worried and nobody can think straight, you know, the leader will use the authoritative tone of leadership to be able to say, okay, everybody follow me. This is what we're going to do. One, two, three. And only a leader with very high EQ skills will be able to shift when times are better into a more democratic, consultative form of leadership, which is the required and which is the, probably the better uh, long-term leadership style. Because that's when they allow you to speak up, they listen to you, and you feel as employees, you are a part of the organization. And that is the role of leadership in one sentence. The leader is able to inspire your buy-in into an organization. That's what a good leader is. Correct. No, because if you want to inspire the people, 
diba? you you first have to put yourself in the position of the people you know when i was growing up my dad told me uh how do you succeed in the corporate world how do you succeed in any organization if you want to uh, climb the ranks diba? be influential no no it, it, ang sabi ng dad ko dapat marunong ka makisama eq hindi puro utak hindi puro brains hindi porke may may MBA ka, may doctorate ka sa management, wherever, what have you, di ba? You'll be the next uh, big thing in business, di ba? You have to know how your people think. You have to know what your people think and how they feel. And you have to connect with them to, in order to impact, no? And thank you for saying that, ma'am. And in fact, that's connected to a question I asked here right now. How does one infect or inspire or influence others to have a dynamic spirit, especially from leaders to staff. How can we be dynamic with the culture of being fatalistic or the attitude of saying, eh, ganun talaga eh. Wala tayo magagawa eh. I think it's coming from a leader who is passionate, and we have many passionate leaders here. How can they I think connected to what you said, how can they continue to inspire the young ones, people like me, people uh, in their 20s, early 30s, fine 30s, diba? <laughs> how can How can we uh, share our passion with them for them to be dynamic as well? Well, first of all, you have to, to be examples yourself. Uh, in other words, you can't tell people to jump into the pool if you yourself won't jump into the pool. So uh, the, best, uh, the best motivation for, for people is to see that you, the leader, is actually uh, uh, doing what you are preaching. You know, it, it's not... Uh, Alamo, there was a very good example of, uh, of this kind of uh, motivation. He, or Del Rosario, the, if you remember, he went to all the war spots uh, when there was a crisis and to bring home the Filipino expats who were there. Yeah. And, then, and then he was asked, why, why do you have to be the one? He, I mean, he's senior and why do you have to be the one there? Uh, why don't you ask your, your deputies, your, the people under you to do that? Right. And he said, uh, I will not ask anybody to do something that I myself will not be prepared to do. And I think that is the most inspiring way to make people uh, follow you and become more motivated. If they see you as dynamic, they'll just have to keep up with you. Right. And I think there's nothing more inspiring than to have a leader, like what you said, no, exhibits these values lives and breathes these values and who, is, who are willing to get their hands dirty just like staff uh, and, and people in the company are doing so. No? And, and thank you for saying that, ma'am. No? I'm sure it's something that leaders and maybe future leaders like myself uh, would like to learn and to somehow master as we continue with our uh, careers here. No? So as a young professional myself, I thank you for imparting that, ma'am. So thank you very much. Uh, again, we open the floor to our community. If we have more questions, please do not be shy. Uh, we, have, we have with us a very, very good speaker. And uh, there is much to learn from her, especially, you know, the people my age here. Go ahead and ask. So if you have questions, please type them in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, while waiting, ma'am, uh, would you have anything else to say, especially maybe to uh, those, the young ones here in the group uh, who are new the corporate world who are experiencing something this difficult the very first time during people power i'm sorry i was not born yet and i think many of our many of our people here weren't even born yet and this is our first time it caught me by surprise it's like living in a sci-fi movie the horror movie so what's your message to the young people enjoy nostalgia well first of all i really want to congratulate joy nostalgia because from everything that I have read and I have researched, it seems to be a very good company. It is a very good company. You have, uh, you have a leader that cares, uh, and there is nothing more valuable than that. And if I were a millennial, I would apply. 
So let me just say that. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> now, to the, you know, millennials are supposed to be notorious for not caring at all about anything. You know, if you read all the studies on millennials, they're supposed to be uh, very, how do we say that? very disdainful of, of uh, structures and establishment and not that any teenager is not like that because I'm sure uh, even during our time there's a rebellious streak. But the millennials are always described. If you read all the social studies on millennials, uh, your value structure is different. Your, your priorities are different. Uh, you don't want anything long term, uh, even with relationships. You don't uh, necessarily um, believe in the usual courtship, marriage, etc. But you know, I will tell you my advice to you is if you cultivate critical thinking, and if you are uh, you are generally. I'm sure you are generally kind and a good person, good persons. You know how other people feel. In mm. the end, you, cannot, you, you should not be stuck with labels. You know what I mean? You should be able, your individuality should show, your leadership should show, and regardless of whether you are clustered with millennials who are supposed to be a bit on the lazy side, etc., they are disloyal, supposed to be, I don't believe in any of that. You can always find millennials who defy all kinds of labels. But what you have right now, if you are gainfully employed, that is a blessing. You are gainfully employed in a beautiful company, that is a double blessing. And you should have the gratitude and you should have to repay that gratitude by working to your best ability. Because... Uh, because that is the only way that not only will you progress in the company, not only will the company thrive, but the country will eventually thrive. And we are all part of society. We cannot just look after ourselves. Mm -hmm. So really looking at it with critical uh, thinking and knowing what, what blessings you have, what blessings you have, just learn to be grateful. Learn to be grateful and give back. Give back because you received so many blessings. Right. That I think just would, would probably be my message. My yes. sons are millennials, by the way. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I have plenty, plenty of experience. Right. <laughs> right. Actually, you know, you were hitting the nail on the head when you were describing my generation, millennials. You were right on, no? But I, I, I'm into long-term relationships, just saying. But you know, yes, tama naman yung, uh, how you describe. Just to be clear, no. But so, so with that, de ba yung ay wala masadong commitment uh, pa iba iba against the against the structure institution. How can you then spark that fire in the belly of a millennial? How do you keep that passion burning? How do you sustain the millennial's attention on one thing? and to give his or her best to that, for that one cause? Well, I guess the first thing to do is find, find their passion as well. I'm sure there are certain things that they prefer to do than other things. And as much as possible, match the passion with the job description. That's, that's uh, one way of doing it. But uh, again, I think you have to do it Unfortunately, it's not a one-size-fits-all type of advice. You know, uh, one of the leadership styles is coaching. You coach, meaning one-on-one. -on -one. You coach the people that you see are rising stars. And you really go out of your way to mentor them, to nurture them, uh, to try uh, as much as possible to change the mindset if there's a need to change the mindset. But you identify early on who are those that are willing to be coached and will learn from coaching. Because kung masyado namang apathetic, kahit na turuan mo, uh, they're not also going to learn. So the first thing to do is identify 
those with potential and then coach them hmm. and really uh, uh, give them more time um, than you would ordinarily do. It's the only way. Thank you, Ms. Yoli. Thank you for that. No, uh, thank you for answering our questions very, very well. Well, Ms. Yoli, thank you very much for, for uh, all those uh, presentation. And I'm very, very glad that uh, you uh, not only inspired us uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with taking action, but uh, you have given us the answer key <laughs> uh, to, to know exactly what to do. This is fantastic. You know? So this is being inspired at the same time being being informed already what to do. <laughs> I'm <telling you> <laughs> very, 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 very beautiful and and, and, and very uh, very timely and. Uh, a lot of the questions earlier was, uh, some of them were my questions, so <laughs> thank you for answering them as well. It's, it's, very, it's very refreshing to be able to hear uh, uh, the, uh, the assurances that you have been given us uh, about how our company is doing, and uh, I, I definitely thank you for that. Um, I do wish that, uh, uh, I do wish that uh, your message will continue to resonate with the rest of our organization. Uh, that is actually the whole purpose why we have this uh, culture day, precisely to be able to cultivate the, this, uh, this mindset to, to, towards everybody. And, and it's not only just a mindset, but uh, a sense, a way of life uh, that all of us can share together. So uh, and thank you very much. This has been really a, a, a great opportunity for us to be able to listen to a guru like you. guru. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jack. And may I say, uh, I really hope that you are running. You you are running a very enlightened company, and I really hope that more people will follow you, your style, and take care of your staff and your customers the way you have. Thank you. It's very inspiring, and I hope more people in the business, in, in, in business, follow your lead, and may your tribe increase. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. My, my wife is here, and uh, she she's saying thank you very much for for all of that, and. Uh, uh, it's great that my wife is here. At least she's hearing it from you, not anymore from me. <laughs> yes, <I'm Jello. laughs> Yeah, thank you. No, really, uh, I mean that with all my heart. Thank you. You're a good. You're a good company. I hope many more follow you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we end this program, uh, we'd like to show you something, uh, and of course, we'll send it to you. No. Uh, we'd like to present to you this certificate of appreciation, okay? So, this oh. certificate of, of appreciation is hereby awarded to Yolanda Ong as our joyful tribute and appreciation for sharing your presence and expertise with us and for sparkling light, hope, and love in our Joy Nostalgia Culture Day Mind Session. May you always continue to be light that sparkles and shines ever so bright creating moments of happiness, memories of hope for others. Spark joy forever, awarded the second day of October in the year of our Lord, 2020. So once again, ma'am, thank you so much, Miss Wally, and we hope to have you on board with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.